So here's what we're gonna be working with today. And most of it's pretty standard. Um, what's unique is probably these two forming mandrels. These are a little bit different than normal forming mandrels. But if you just have your standard forming mandrel, that'll work just fine for this. So don't worry about it. What I will explain, so this is made by, this forming mandrel is made by Andante Rondo. Everyone's seeing the share screen, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, this is this is made by Andante Rondo and it's designed by Giorgio Vasilia, who is the one who, from whom I wish I learned this process. Okay, but if you, obviously most of you, probably none of you have this, which is fine. You can also get a 1 16 or 2 16 nail punch. And I got, uh, I got three of these for like $2.99 at the hardware store. And that's in the blog post as well. And so that gets you pretty, pretty close to what he has. Actually, this one's not so great. I just got some at Harbor Freight that were, the taper was a lot closer and that was a 1 16. So that's a good option as well. Okay. Uh, besides that, just the reamer, holding mandrel, some clip, uh, tip, tip nippers, and then your normal stuff. Okay. And so we're going to be working from gouge shaped and profiled cane. And it really, really, really does not matter what shape you use. I have been experimenting with this for almost two years. I've done this on all the Fox shapes, all the Rieger shapes, Chris Lieb, uh, Burden, um, Hertzberg, uh, just like tons and tons of shapes. And what I have discovered with this process is that whatever shape and gouge and profile you're using, this process will help that read be the best version of itself. And it, yeah, it works with everything. It really, really does. Okay. So you can use whatever shape, whatever profile you're using, it will work for this. Okay. So this is, this is our starting point. All right. So here we go. And again, please, please ask questions at anywhere in this process. So let me just check in with my students. Tim, I see you there. You ready, Tim? Yeah, I think we're all ready here. Okay, how's Nisea doing? I'm doing good. Okay, good. And so Riley and Tim and Nisea, just be really conscious. If one of you does help someone else out, sanitize your hands. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do with our dry piece of cane is we're going to do the bevel. Okay. And we're going to be beveling the entire length of the tube. Now, for those who are really comfortable with the concept of the bevel, I'll just do a quick explanation. So we give a bevel in the back, which forces open the aperture at the tip of the reed, okay? But we don't see the effects of the bevel until we're pretty far into the process. So um, sometimes you might discover with certain shapes and profiles that you might want to do a more aggressive bevel. If you feel like the tip opening is not enough, then you can do a more aggressive, shorter bevel towards just the, the butt of the tube to really get the aperture to pop open at the, at the tip of the reed. But we're going to just learn the, we're going to review the basic process, which is a full tube bevel. Okay. So what are we doing? We are, as you look at this cane, we're essentially going to create an angle right here, right there and right there. So that when the cane comes together, it comes together and that's this nice rounded circle, but we have to create an angle for it to come together straight. Okay. And there, again, if you look at um, the diagrams in the blog post, you'll see that I've drawn it out in there as well. Okay. So to do that, I have a file. And I'm going to hold this at an angle about 45 degrees like this. Let me turn it this way. Like so. And I'm going to be taking off just this, this little angle right here on the inside of the cane right here. Okay. So I'll try and do it. I'll show it to you this way. And I usually do four passes like this. 
Well, that was going to be six. Okay, so I just did six passes. I'm going to turn the other side. I'm going to change my angle so you guys can see this a different way. So let me stand up here. Okay, you can see right there. Do you guys see that angle that I've created right there? There's the angle. That's what I've just created. So now I'm going to do that to the other side. make sense Jordan does that make sense what you just saw me do yeah. okay good now my students Tara and Riley have been working with this for about two years as well and so Tara and Riley feel free to chime in with your thoughts as well because you guys are very adept at this so now we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing again so about a 45 degree angle all the way from the collar to the butt Kind of gouge that a little bit. Okay. And then the same thing to the other side. Probably the most awkward part in the whole process is just because it's like hard to hold on to it and then go up and down with the file. Um, so it takes a little bit of use getting used to it. So if it feels really, really weird in your hands, don't panic. That's very, very normal. Honestly, I don't think it's the worst part. The worst part is when you have to take your knife and cut all the way down the barrel. <laughs> That's also concerning. That's the worst part. <laughs> okay. Welcome, George. Where are you coming from, George? Alaska. Alaska, welcome. Welcome, welcome. All right. Thanks. I've always been interested in this. I've never tried it. Oh, good. Okay. Did you get to see that bevel? I, I didn't notice what, at what point you came in. Do you want me to show that bevel again? No, no. I got it. I'm following you. Okay, perfect. And I definitely, in my effort to show that on camera, I totally just gouged the side of this, but I'm going to forge ahead, but don't do that. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. So at this point, everyone should have beveled all four sides of their piece of cane. Give me a thumbs up. That was a go. Haley says that's a go. Jordan says that's a go. Tim, how you doing there? Good. Okay. All right. Autumn, how's it going? Are you are you just watching or are you actually doing it with us? I, I'm just watching. Just watching. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay. So there we go. That's the bevel. Okay. So now we are going to um, go ahead and soak the reed. And we don't have to soak this cane a lot. This is one of the things I love about this process as well. It doesn't have to be super saturated. And where we are in Idaho, it's very dry, very, very cold. I used to just like heat the cane to death and like really wet, really hot. We don't have to do that. So go ahead and you're just going to dip your cane in water for, I don't know, 10 seconds. Long enough to tell a really bad bassoon joke. What's a bad bassoon joke? What's the difference between an oboe and a bassoon? What's the difference? The oboe, or the bassoon burns longer. Oh, that was perfect. Okay, now take your cane out of the water. Thank you, Tara. That was a terrible joke. All right, and that's that's all we need to do. Okay. So now we're just going to fold the cane. So hopefully the cane that you have has some kind of center mark. Ideally it does. 
And if you've got a knife or really any flat surface that you can fold it against, we're gonna go ahead and fold that cane. So I'm just gonna use my file and just fold right along that center mark. If you don't have a center mark, you can go ahead and, and mark it. You can even use a, an X-Acto knife to give it a little score just to make it easier to fold, okay? But hopefully as a, you know, whether we profile our cane or we get it profiled, there's typically a center mark that's in there. So this is what we have now. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to cut, we're going to cut our tube a little bit shorter. And I have a little guide that I use that makes this really fast. We're going to cut it down to 27 mm -hmm. millimeters. So if you don't, so I have a guide that I'm just going to hook onto um, the collar and that's going to allow me to trim that down. If you don't go ahead and measure it and mark it. And I, I will encourage you to go ahead and do cut it at 27 millimeters for this first read that you're trying. Okay. I have some theories I've been working on about um, the proportion of the tube to the blade and creating a read that really is responsive. And one of my working theories with this two wire read method is that we keep the blade just slightly longer than the halfway point. So if, if your tube is 27 millimeters, then cutting your blade at 28 or 28 and a half, which means that over 50% of the reed is going to vibrate with that blade, I think is part of the success of this style of reed making. So I do like the shorter tube length, okay? So I line that up. This is when you need tip nippers. Um, if you don't have them, you can use an X-Acto knife. This is what I'm gonna use. You can get these at the hardware store. Don't buy this on forests. On forests, it's like $100, but you can just go to the hardware store. What is this called? In a hardware store? I'm pretty sure that those are wire cutters. Wire cutters, yeah. I was just asking my husband who's sitting here. And they're really cheap, but yeah. Harbor store. Yeah, go to Harbor Freight. Okay, so we're going to cut that 27 millimeters from the collar and do that to both sides. Mrs. Crawford? Yeah. I had to run and get uh, water to soak my cane. What is that orange thing that you were putting on the end? This is just this is just a pre-measured guide, so I can just put it on. Oh. The yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, just makes it faster. So, but you can just measure it out. Twenty-seven. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. We all good. We thumbs up on that. We've all cut our tube lengths. Great. Okay. So. Next, and go ahead and maybe just drop it in the water for another second, a few seconds. Okay. Now we're going to wrap our first wire. So in this method, um, Giorgio taught us and really recommended 24 gauge wire. I had typically used 22 gauge wire in my reed making. And I gotta say, I really love the 24 gauge. We also are going to wrap it three times not two times. And that's going to help really reinforce the tube strength and the roundness. Um, and Giorgio gave this great demonstration essentially where he wrapped it around his finger, pulled it off, and then you, you, know, you go to pinch down the wire. And even though it's 24 gauge, it's a lot harder to do if it's a three wrap versus a two wrap. So it's just because we are gonna lose that middle wire it really helps with that third wrap around to really hold a nice open tube. Okay. So here we go. Um, I'm going to keep it right on the spool. I'm not going to pre-cut it. Let me move some, some things out of the shot here. Okay, here we go. That looks better. All right. And so for my students who are kind of newer to this, we're going to wrap clockwise. If this is a clock, we're going to wrap clockwise. Okay. So one, two, three times around like that. And we're going to, we're going to wrap up. So when we finish, 
it's going to look something like this. I will say it, it is that is something that I do differently. I wrap down um, just so, because whenever you twist the wire, then it, you're twisting it clockwise as well. Yeah. Um, whereas the way you do it this way, you're going to do it counterclockwise. That's yeah, really good point, Riley. Yes. So either way you wrap, we want to just continue to keep that as we twist the wire. And so the way that this lays, when I twist these together, I'm going to now twist in a counterclockwise fashion. Okay. And that'll keep the, uh, the wire from wrapping up on itself. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to do a quick turn with my fingers like that. So it's very loose. We want this top wire to sit right right below the collar and and i mean right below the collar some um you know in the three wire method we often will leave about a millimeter millimeter and a half maybe even two millimeters depending on your style between the collar and the wire we really want this wire right at the collar okay so now i've done that with my hand and i'm going to come in with pliers and when we tighten wire we pull and then twist pull and then twist. Okay. And keep snugging up that wire until we really get it right below that collar. Take a look at that position. There's maybe, maybe half a millimeter, not even. Okay. And we want it quite, quite snug. How are we doing? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Am I going too fast? I see a lot of thumbs up. Good. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Um, if your blades have shifted a little bit, minus to have shifted, you can go ahead and kind of smush them over, get them nice and lined up. And we'll continue to work with that too once we get into the next step. Okay. All right. So now we've got that wire on there. Nice and snug, that's how tight I have it. And this cane, this is Barton cane. Um, it's Chris Lieb shape. This is from their factory seconds pile. And yeah, so this cane actually comes with a bit of scoring on the bark already. We're, but we're gonna do a score that goes all the way through the cane. And so it, it doesn't matter that this is already scored. I've done this many, many times. I'm gonna go ahead and score all the way through. It's gonna work out just fine. Okay, so this is the part that Tara was saying can make you feel rather uncomfortable. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have six scores. We're going to subdivide the reed into, well, the tube into three equal sections. So imagine, if you will, three sections. One, so two outside sections and then a middle section like that, okay? We're gonna put two scores here in the outside section and two scores here in the outside section. And we're gonna do this with a knife. You could use an X-Acto knife. I use this uh, Kyocera ceramic knife. This is actually my reed making knife. I hate sharpening reeds. And uh, Justin Miller turned me onto this years ago and I've used this for reed making. It's extremely sharp. Um, sharpening reeds or blades? The bl the blade. Okay, wait, just to clarify. Your, wait, what was your question? Well, earlier you said you hate sharpening reeds. Oh, I definitely don't sharpen reeds. We we won't do that. No. <laughs> I also hate sharpening knives, and I never do that. Um, so I love the Kyocera ceramic knife. It really is sharp enough to make a bassoon reed. So, okay, so just. Be very careful. It's going to feel uncomfortable, but just be careful. So I'm going to go ahead and make my first cut. So I'm going to fit two scores on this side, the middle we're going to skip for right now, and then two scores on the other side. We're just going to kind of wiggle it in. 
and let it crack all the way up to the wire. Let it travel up to the wire. Okay, so there's my first one. Here comes my second one. I kind of wiggle it to get it started. And then once it starts, go ahead and let the crack travel all the way up to the first wire. The knife may not go to the first wire, but let the, let the crack travel to the first wire. Okay. Did that make sense what I just did? Good. So we're going to do that now to the other side. So wiggle the knife in or the X-Acto blade, whatever you're using, or even just a razor blade. And just let that crack travel all the way up to the first wire, which is also why we want that first wire to be very tight because we want, we don't want the crack to obviously to go into the blade. Okay. There we go. So now you have four scores. It should look, your butt should look something like this. Okay, and then let the, let's dip let's dip that for uh, ten seconds. Time enough for another bad joke if anyone has one. There's Annie Mason. Hello, Annie. It's so great to see you. Are we dipping the whole reed or just? Yeah, dip the whole reed. Throw okay. the whole thing in that water. Okay. All right, and so now we're going. Yeah, go for it, Tara. Sometimes if I'm not holding, I don't know if you can see my screen, but I've already kind of already finished this read. But sometimes when I'm doing my um, scoring, um, if I'm not holding the read right, I'll actually end up breaking the read because it just bends underneath me. So be really careful that you're holding it at the bottom when you're doing your scoring rather than up the top because the top of the reed can still bend when you're trying to wiggle the knife in there and get it in there. I've had to sacrifice many a reed because yeah. I was impatient. That's a great point. Yeah, hold right at the wire. Hold right at the wire, that'll help. Okay, so now we're getting to the fun part. And this is where for those of my students, hopefully you have a nail punch. Did all my students get the nail punches I left in the reed room? Yes, can I keep it? Yeah, 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 totally. You can also pay me $1 for it, but I don't really care. I can do that too. <laughs> okay, so you can use a nail punch. I'm gonna be using the Andante Irondo uh, forming mandrel. If all you have is a normal forming mandrel, it will work. What I am gonna say is that the taper is so severe because um, Giorgio's working theory with this is that when we, when we put in a typical tapered forming mandrel, it's quite straight and it pushes a lot of that pressure essentially straight up. And so he believes like that's what causes the cracks. Whereas when we have this more severely tapered mandrel, it forces the pressure like this. And so it doesn't go into the blade like this does. And I can't, I don't disagree with that statement because my reeds crack into the blade maybe 9% of the time now, as opposed to maybe 35, 45% of the time in my traditional three wire reed making method. So I do think the directionality and the taper on this mandrel does have an effect along with some other aspects of the process that are a bit different, okay? So again, if you are gonna use a traditional forming mandrel, um, it, it, it will work, it might still crack, but it'll work for, for today, okay? so. I'm gonna show you though, however, on this mandrel or on the um, the uh, nail punch for those who have that. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and put it in. And we're not, we're not going to twist this. We're not gonna twist, we're just gonna go straight in. And you can see the cane starts to open up and flare, which is great. I'm sorry, when I said you are not gonna twist, it's the opposite. You do twist in this method. I forgot. That is the difference. When we do a three wire read, we don't twist, but we are going to twist. And as I insert this, I'm going to kind of massage the sides of the read. Just kind of massage it as you twist in. Okay. No cracks into the blade. I'm super happy about that. Okay. And I'm just using my fingers to kind of massage the sides. That's it. Once I get to the bottom of there, which is essentially 
to here. It might be a little bit higher on the um, on the um, nail tab. I'm going to come back in and tighten this top wire again. And, and so remember, we're to tighten, we're going to pull and twist. Pull and twist. And this is where we're going to start to round the tube a little bit. Okay. Thumbs up. Feel good? Great. Okay. So now we're going to take that forming mandrel out. We're going to go ahead and take it out. This is what it looks like right now. Kind of looks like a hot mess. That's okay. And we're going to let it um, go ahead and push it back together again. And so now we're going to add two more scores to that middle section. And you can see really nicely, it's quite flat right there. And so we're going to add two more scores, but we're going to go through both the top and the bottom side of this tube. Um, the reason we wait to do this um, is because after you shove the bottom of the reed in, the 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 lining like changes, and so you have to you have to do the first one. You have to you have to start forming the reed before doing these middle two. Otherwise, the reed doesn't line up right when you actually get your last bottom wire on there. Um, also, I only ever do however many I can fit. So if that's only one more score, one more score is as good. <laughs> yeah, that's great, great info, Tara. Thank you. Absolutely. I've also tried to cheat to cheat the process. I'm like, I'll just go ahead and make all six scores right off. And it cracked into the um, blade. And so I was like, well, that's why Giorgio taught it the way he did. Okay. So now that you've put those other two scores into the middle section, now we're ready to put it back on that forming mandrel. And it's just going to open up like a flower. It should look something like this. And again, just kind of pinch the sides, let it form. And hopefully you're noticing, now it might be different. If you're using a more traditional mandrel, it might be a little bit different, but hopefully you've got no cracks into the blade. Gia, how did yours do? I see you've got it there. No cracks into the blade? Awesome. Good, good, good. George. Yeah, it yeah, I'm using a traditional mandrel, and usually I'm constantly cracking into the blades. This oh. is really good. Awesome. I'm happy. Good, 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 good. George, how's yours looking? Great so far. Wonderful. Excellent. Good. Uh, Haley, how about you? Are you doing it with us? Yes. Um, so I am a two two wraparound person so i pre-cut all my wire so i couldn't even do the third wrap so mine split a little bit into the blade <laughs> but that's good you're kind of you're kind of proving the process why the the third wrap really does make a big difference so <laughs> thanks for proving that okay good so now we're going to switch over to just a normal um holding mandrel this one is the andante and rondo one so it does have a mark on here um, but you can just use your normal forming mandrel. And I feel like, hang on, let me pull out mine. I feel like most um, holding mandrels have some kind of marking on them. So you'll kind of see what I do, but we're gonna go pretty far onto this. Okay, so now with your holding, your, your holding mandrel, not forming, holding, we're gonna twist that in. Basically just as far as it will go. Okay, so it looks like this. And now we're gonna place the second wire. And the second wire <clears throat> is going to go, let me actually just double check. I'm gonna say six millimeters. Um, I think it's eight. It's six yeah, six millimeters from the butt. I stopped measuring a long time ago. I, that's why I wanted to check because I don't measure, I eye it now, but always good to check the process. So same thing. And it's going to go in the same direction, the same direction. Okay. So we put the wire on. We're going to wrap in a clockwise motion going up.
go ahead and let the wires cross like that. And if you're doing it exactly the way I'm doing it, you're going to tighten the wires in a counterclockwise direction um, so that you're not folding the wires up on, on itself. And so again, we're going to pull to tighten and then twist, pull, then twist. And then of course, uh, double check that it's six millimeters. This is probably going to feel a lot higher than you're used to in a three wire reed. It's gonna feel pretty far away from the butt, but it works. And we're going to measure from the bottom of the tube to the bottom of the wire, not to the middle of the wire. So it's a full six millimeters. At the bottom wire, I'm not just using the butt to the bottom of the wire. Yep, just double checking my own instructions. Okay, good. And so then go ahead and tighten again. And we want it to be pretty snug. <clears throat> and you may have already noticed uh, perhaps that your top wire has already come a little bit loose and so you can go ahead and, and snug that down a little bit as always with our wires we want it to be tight but not not cutting into the the cane at all we don't want to make divots in the cane just very snug now as i um talk about this i want to i want to address some of the underlying concepts and theories of this read, which is that I find this read style that the read finishes very quickly and it's very free in vibration, which doesn't mean it's going to be like really rattly or have, a, have too much sizzle. It just vibrates very free, very, very free at a much earlier stage in the process and finishing. And I believe that's because we have reduced the amount of points at which we stop vibration. So if you think about each re each wire as a point at which we stop or control vibration, plus the collar, depending on where you place your, the top read in a three wire method, you could have four points at which you're stopping or controlling vibration. But of course, the whole point of a read is to vibrate. And so we basically have eliminated two points where we stop vibration in the tube. And I believe my theory is that this is part of why the reed finishes so quickly because we're allowing the reed to vibrate much more than we normally do. Does that make sense? What I just said. Yeah. Tara and Riley, you guys have been doing this for a long time. What are your thoughts? Uh, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I've been also helping this same, same thing. Oh, you're fine. Um, <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to have a response. <laughs> I've also found I I really like that about the Dante read that or the two wire read is that it finishes much much faster. You don't have to take off as much cane, and you don't have to wait for it to dry for a month. Yeah, there are some days when you finish when you clip the read, and it's got like just clip it that's it and you don't take any any cane off of the top or anything and it's just instantly almost almost playable like maybe not to the point where you want to take it to a concert but if you're like running real real short on time you just clip the reed maybe take a little off the tip and you can play on it and of course a lot of that's going to be dictated by how how thin your profile is but again i will i will say regardless of your shape and profile i find that the two wire method um, gets you to a finished read much faster and it really magnifies the best features of the read. It just, it just gets there a lot faster. Okay. So 351. Oh, great. Wow. Okay. So this is basically it for the first day. At this point, I would just let this dry. And because I live in super dry climates, I could probably wait 30 minutes and, um, wrap it and then continue going. But we're going to go ahead and just repeat this whole process again. So that's it for day one. That's it. And unlike the three wire read, we can, we'll, we'll come back next week and then we're going to finish this read, but you don't need to wait weeks and months. You just need to wait for the read to dry out.
and then you can go straight into finishing. So it saves a lot of time. I mean, I used to, I'm sure we've all done it. You make mummies and then you just let them sit and you let them sit as long as you can. You don't need to do that. The tube, the tube is formed. It's done. It just needs to dry out. And then we need to uh, retighten those wires. And, uh, but there you go. I mean, the, the hard work has been done here. We just need it to dry. And so day two of this process is wrapping the reed and then finishing the reed. So let's repeat this whole process again. Let's get another piece of cane and do it again, shall we? What are your questions? Anyone have any questions? It feels really simple and it is. It, it's as simple as it feels. <laughs> I love how simple it is. I'm so curious to see how it plays against um, some four wire reads that I'm experimenting with after a master class with Simon. I'm just like, well, now I've got my three section that I'm used to, my four and my two. Like we're just doing all the experiments. <laughs> That's so funny, Haley, because you mentioned that the other day that you were doing four wire. I was like, I gotta teach Haley two wire. <laughs> I love it. I love I'm it. I'm all about simple <laughs> simplicity. So yeah. I'm in. <laughs> and that's definitely been like my leading, my my guiding light in remaking is like, how fast can I make a really quality read? I've always been looking for like speed and quality and consistency. And that's the other thing too. I just feel like with this read style, um, it just feels much more consistent, like much more consistent. So, okay. So we're going to just redo that whole process again from, from, yeah, that whole process. So I'm just going to grab another piece here. Um, oh, you know what? Barton King Factory Seconds. And this is I a piece of um, Morelli Loro. And I've already done up about seven pieces of this cane. And I did notice for me in my elevation, so I'm, I'm at five, about 5,000 feet, that the tip opening was... Um, very very narrow so we're going to do a full i'm going to do a full bevel on this and then i'm going to go back in and cut a second bevel so because i know i need my aperture more open on this shape and profile okay so here we go again let's do it so i've got this big file and essentially we're going to file off that inside angle of the cane right here so that it comes together and so i'm going to do a full bevel all the way through the whole tube and then i'm going to do a secondary bevel just on the back third because i know i need this aperture to open up much more than it was okay and so of course we want to do this on dry cane dry cane okay so i'm holding at a 45 degree angle oh, let me see if i can be uh, like this there we go there we go now you guys can see that Okay, so that inside edge, that bottom edge, I'm going to take off the entire tube. It's really hard to do that on camera. I just had to pull it away so I could do it. So that's what that looks like. And that probably can afford a little bit more. I'm going to do a few more, a few more goes on that. Yes, that's much better. This might be hard to see in the camera. There we go. There's that nice angle now. Okay, and I'm gonna do that to the same, same here. Let's see if I can do this on camera. There we go.
And I've done both sides. And there's that nice angle that I've added. And now because I've already worked with this cane and I know it needs more beveling to get the aperture to pop open, I'm gonna just do a bit more just on the back third of it. Hey, Elizabeth, thanks for making this available. I have to run off to teach. All right, have fun, Cassandra. See you later. Very, very cool. Thanks for putting this out there. Yeah. And there you can see, I don't know if you guys can see that. See how I get, it's a lot flatter right here. And that's going to help the aperture pop open a little bit better for me right there. Now, do you do that only for that particular shape? Yes, only because I've, I've already done seven pieces of this Morelli Lavoro and the tip opening was just, it was not existent. So I know it needs more beveling. Okay, thanks. I would not normally do that. Okay, so there you can see it. And so I'm probably, what's halfway between 45 and 96? Um, 70 something. So it's just a little bit more, it's somewhere between 40, 45 and 96, like there when I do that. Okay. okay. Then we're gonna soak it. It does need a long time, just a few minutes or a few, few seconds. It's one of my favorite things about this cane or this process is that in general, in the, in the um, tube forming and in finishing, and then even in playing, I need far less soaking time than I normally would. And again, I live in a very dry environment. It just requires less, less soaking, which I love. All right, now we're gonna fold down the blade and center point. Go ahead and do your best to get um, get it lined up so it doesn't shift off to the side. Good. That looks good. And so now I'm going to wrap my wire. Read in my left hand, wire in my right hand going in a clockwise and up three times around. Again, check your, there we go. We want this wire to sit right below the collar, just like essentially right at the collar. Pull and twist. We want it quite snug. That's how snug my wire is, that's how tight I pulled it. This is actually a bit tighter than what Giorgio showed me, but um, I, I feel like it, yeah, I like it better tighter. And again, it just reduces risk of cracking into the blade, which just so rarely happens now. I'm gonna pull it one more time. There we go, okay. So this cane is not scored at all from Barton. And so subdivide this into three sections. You can do it with a pencil or you can just eye it. I'm just gonna eye it. And now I'm gonna cut my first two scores. And it's probably about, a, they're probably about a millimeter apart. So I kind of rock it in to get it going. And then I let the, the, the crack travel all, let me move down here. 
let the crack travel all the way up to that wire. Your knife doesn't need to, but the crack does. And then the second one, it's about a millimeter away. You can see it cracking on the camera there. Let it travel all the way up to that wire like that. Then same thing to the other side. There we go. And then the second score. Let that travel up. Okay. And then let's soak it for a few seconds. I think something that I've noticed too with this part with the scoring, um, I actually don't do it that same way either. Um, I find it to be more comfortable to start on one side. So how, start on the side closest to me and then flip the read over and then do it where the side closest to me is. I'm doing it again on the same side, kind of, if that makes sense. Oh, so you so you always are cutting the score next to you as opposed yeah. to I score it away and then I go to next to me. Oh, that's interesting. Right. Yeah, great suggestion, Riley. I love that. Okay. This is what I feel more comfortable with. Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. Okay, so now we're ready for the forming mandrel or the nail punch or whatever you have. And we are going to twist. We are going to twist support along the sides of the reed and it'll start to open up. Look at that, that's beautiful. That's exactly, it's really nice when you can do this on cane that's not pre-scored. So if you're processing your own tube cane, that's perfect. Keep supporting. Okay. Go ahead and tighten that top wire again. Pull and then twist. Okay. Keep supporting like a lot of pressure on the sides right over right over the wire. So I have my thumb on the wire on the tube and on the blade. And I'm holding there and then my finger here a lot like quite a lot of pressure and twisting some more and if and then uh, if you need to if you feel like you can oh there we go now it's nice and snug and that's great no cracks into the blade love it love it okay so now i'm going to take that out and i've got my two flat sides flat sections and if you need to, you can kind of close it back down again to help you. If you need to close it back down, that's totally fine. And we're going to run two more scores right up that middle section. That's what that looks like. Then maybe dump it in the water for a few more seconds. And now we're going to twist in our holding mandrel just as far as you can get it in there and keep supporting right on the wire, your thumb on the wire, the tube and the blade with your first finger supporting on the other side and twist in, twist in, lots of pressure in your fingers. Really support this. And it should just open up like a flower. That looks really good. Okay. Here's what it looks like. It's like a, it's like a pleated skirt. <laughs> that was really funny in my head. All right. And so now we're ready to add our bottom wire six millimeters from the butt. We're going to wrap clockwise three times. Okay. 
And again, this is going to feel really high. We're going to measure from six millimeters from the butt to the bottom of the wire, not to the middle of the wire wrap, but to the bottom of the wire wrap. Keep tightening that. We want it completely snug. Oh my gosh, what did I do wrong, my friends? Who sees my mistake? <laughs> what did I do wrong? <laughs> yes, Gia, that's okay. It's so nice and round, I can just, I think I can flip it around. Maybe I can, ooh, I can. Look at that, that's a round tube. Yeah. I did that with my first one. That's how I noticed it. <laughs> okay, good. It wasn't too tight. I, I rescued it. All right, go ahead and trim that up. Look at that. No cracks into the blade. And look at that tube. And you can even, if you need to, um, if you feel like you're seeing a lot of space between the scores, you can go ahead and just move it up on your mandrel and then retighten that wire. You don't have to do crimping. You can crimp, but I, I don't typically crimp. We usually do a lot of crimp, or many people do a lot of crimping in the three wire method. I don't do so much crimping. The tube just kind of forms itself really nicely like this. Okay. And then once you're, uh, your wires are nice and snug, of course, not pinching the wood, just snug like that. Approximately how open is the the top wire? Um, you mean in, in like how tight is it? No, is it round or oval more? It's more oval. It's more oval. Yeah. Yeah, it really is a, it's a consistent taper all the way from the um, butt to the tip. Great. Yep, absolutely. Good, and then we can take it off. And there's that lovely tube. And then all that has to happen, it just needs to dry out. It does not need to sit around. We just let that dry out. So let me check the time, 409, perfect. Okay, we have six minutes. So um, what happens next is on the Bassoon With A View website, I will also share a link next Thursday to our read class if you want to come in and see how we we finish this off. But what is next is just to when it's totally dry. So depending on your humidity level where you are, just needs to dry out, and then you you can wrap it in your normal method or um, heat shrink tube, whatever you normally do. It really doesn't matter. Um, and then we just finish it. And the finishing, the way that we're going to finish the the blank is different. It's a little bit different. It's a lot easier. It's a lot faster, but we're going to take cane from unexpected places when we first do this. So all of that is on the blog on the um, second part of the, if you go to the bassoon with a view website, there's a tab for two wire read making. There's two posts day one and then day two finishing. And you could go ahead and watch it there, but I'll drop these again on Thursday. You guys can come back to read class if you want to, and we will finish these all together. But yeah, that's day one. I have a question, if if I may. Of course, yes. So after these dry out, and I see you have Duco cement, do you put that cement all the way up to the first wire, or? Nope, I just do the Duco cement right around the bottom wire. That's it. Just around there, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And in the blog post, um, Giorgio had us using cotton thread with wood glue, um, <laughs> and I just. I didn't like it, but you, it really doesn't matter. You can do whatever you normally do. It really doesn't make a difference in my opinion. Yes. Yeah. I use some heat shrink tubing, but. Yeah, that, I use that for years. It's great. It's great. So, yeah. I had a question if it's okay to ask. Yeah. Um, when you're, um, when you're using the second mandrel, the forming mandrel, and you're putting on the second wire, the bottom wire, is there a certain point at which you're, um, <laughs> do, you line, do you line up the bottom of the tube with any point in your mandrel to get it the yeah. right shape for your bocal? So this is, 
this is the holding mandrel made by Dante Arondo. And so, yes, it has a line here and that is the, that is the reference point, but I'm pretty sure it lines up. Um, it lines up at the same circumference as these markings do this is, this is i think the is a rieger uh maybe it's not i'm not sure which one this is but essentially you're going to stick it in annie until it can go no further it's going to be stopped by that first wire if that makes sense so and the other thing is too as you saw there was kind of like there was daylight between the scores as i did that and so as you go you can go down as far as you want and then as you tighten it just keep going, you know, keep lifting it off the mandrel until you get all those scores closed again. So it really doesn't matter how far down you go. It really just, we want to get those scores closed up with the wire eventually. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. I just realized there's things in the chat. Sorry, friends. I totally missed the chat. Tara, 24, Alicia. Hi, Alicia. I didn't greet you. What gauge? Yes, 24 gauge wire. All right, autumn left. Okay, cool. All right. Well, feel free to um, email me with any questions or Facebook me if for those who came in on Facebook. And again, I'll put this, I'll put a link back up next Thursday as well. And you guys can come into read class and I'll show you how to finish these, but it is, and it's also on there's, I have videos that show the whole finishing process and then like the um, step-by-step -step instructions as well.